COVID, COVID done did some damage. But I will say, uh, during the summer of 2020, it gave me a lot of time to think on like who I am outside of athletics. Like now that I'm no longer an athlete, who will I choose to be? How will I choose to define myself? So that was a, it was hard, but it was a much needed time for me to focus on me and how I desire for people to see me and how I desire to see Welcome myself. To Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and the purpose of this platform is ultimately to serve and support student athletes, and that's covering all angles, talking about stories, strategies, and successes, ultimately to help them succeed beyond their degree. And with that being said, I would just encourage you all, if you have not done so yet, I would encourage you to make sure you subscribe so you catch all the newest and latest episodes, as well as leaving a rate and a review. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt takes about five seconds, but by you leaving that rating review, then you allow us to continue to spread this message and continue to make this impact in this way. So now that we got those church announcements out the way, we're going to go ahead and introduce today's guest. Today's guest we have on the show, we have none other than Miss Tamara Kirkendall. She's a former D1 student athlete. And with that being said, she also now is doing some amazing and phenomenal things. I love to be able to brag on people who are, who are doing cool things, especially putting student athletes in position to be successful. And what she currently is doing now, she's the founder of Athletes Raising the Standard, also known as Arts. So we're going to go ahead and bring Miss Kirkendall to the stage. Welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. So did I, did I miss anything? That was beautiful. That was a great introduction. Short, sweet, and to the point. Oh, man. Right on, right on. But go go ahead. I know I didn't get everything. So so go ahead. Give the people a quick snapshot of, of a little bit about you and, you know, just how you got into this space. Okay, great. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, like Jonathan said, my name is Tamara Kirkendall. I'm a former D1 track athlete. I was a short sprinter for the University of Arkansas. I just graduated this past spring, spring 2020. Um, just to give a little background on, on me, I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. So I've been running track since the fifth grade. So 10 plus years I've been in the game. It's been a grind, but I've loved it, never hated it. It's just a thing that I just truly had a passion for. Um, I ran throughout, like I said, high school, middle school, and the beginning elementary school. I was also an AAU track athlete. So all my AAU athletes out there, I understand the grind is different. Those summer <laughs> track meets, boy, be hot. But I will say uh, during my AAU years, I spent a lot of time meeting great people from different parts of the state, competing across the country. It is a great experience. I was given the opportunity to compete in high school as well. Uh, I went to the meet of champs meet every year during my high school year. It was just great competing against the best people in Arkansas at the time. So that was a very eye-open experience. So just running for middle school and high school was cool, but I kind of want to take my my talent to the next level. So I was like, hey, let's be a college athlete. So mm -hmm. um, after working hard in uh, my summer track and high school track, I was communicating with my coaches about me wanting to be a part of a collegiate track and field team. So like, OK, Tamara, you see the time. So what we got to do. Let's get it done. So uh, during my college search process, um, I applied for the University of Arkansas and then two private schools, High Point University and the Elon University. Um, they were kind of up north on the coast and you know, Arkansas was like mm -hmm. down south. I've always had a passion to run for Arkansas because I mean, who doesn't want to run for Arkansas? Like the Razorbacks, the, the women's team, phenomenal. Like <laughs> it's just, I can't use a word to describe the team and the history. So I was like, yeah, I want to be a Razorback, I want to be a Razorback. Um, but I had a kind of a bad feeling about going to Arkansas just because I'm from Arkansas. And I had this mindset that, oh, if I go there, I'm going to meet the same people that I went to school with. Mm -hmm. uh, long story short, I did not, I was not able to financially pay for the private schools that I applied for. I did get accepted, but I couldn't pay for them. So I was like, okay, Arkansas, here I come. We'll pay. So like I said, like I said, um, I was communicating with my coaches that I wanted uh, to run. So they were, 
talking to the uh, Arkansas Sprint track coach, but it was kind of hard getting in contact with him. So the first week of um, college, I was not on the track team. I was still trying to get in contact with the coach, like, like, hey, I'm interested. What I got to do? <laughs> Nothing. So it was one day I was sitting in my dorm. I was like, okay, so let's just call this man one more time. I called him. He picked up the phone. My heart dropped. I was like, oh, oh, it's him. This is Coach Johnson. Okay, uh, let's 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 talk. Okay, he said, okay, um, come down to my office and then we'll talk about it. When I tell you, life flashed before my eyes. I was like, okay, Tamir, you gotta come in there with the right words, the right presence. Like you gotta come in there like you know what you want to do, like you know what you want. So as I walk to the office, I'm nervous, but trying to be as confident as I can. So I get in there. Coach Johnson looking at me straight face. And then he asked me, why should I let you on the team? And in that moment, I feel like I just reflected back on all the years of hard working on the track, all the hard work I've done in the classroom and just really defining myself who I am athletically, athletically, academically, and personally to answer this um, big question. So I feel like I, I've answered the question to the best of my ability. I told him that I understand. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Ballers, y'all already know who it is. It's your host, Jonathan Jones. And I just want to share with you all something new that we're doing. We just rolled out the platform. It's called Podcasting for Players, helping student athletes get positioned before that name, image, and likeness comes around. I want to show you all how to start your own podcast, walking you from the idea, ultimately, to creation. So from concept to creation, I'm walking you through all the steps, how to launch the podcast, how to monetize the podcast, what equipment you need, all those things. So look, what I need you to do is need you to go to the link in my Instagram bio or my Twitter bio, okay? And then click the link that says podcasting for players course. Then I want you to type in this coupon code right down there and it's just half off, all caps. Type in that coupon code will take off half of the price of the course and then you will have access to everything that you need and then reach out and ask me any questions that you might have but all right family we're gonna go ahead and get back to today's episode but once again podcasting for players helping you ultimately get positioned to where you can monetize your name image and likeness but also develop some career readiness skills through the process that my times aren't what your current girls are running, but I have a very hardworking uh, mindset. I don't give up. I don't want anything handed to me. I want to earn what I do. It's okay. I give you a chance. I was like, all right, let's start this thing. But that was that was almost the beginning. The hard part was, you know, getting a team, and the second part was, you know, being successful. So um, my first two years on the team, it was hard. I struggled with confidence issues. I thought that like I didn't deserve to be there because my times weren't up to par with other young ladies. So due to like self doubt, um, I didn't got I did not get the opportunity to compete at any um, out of state meets. So I only did home meets. Towards my sophomore year, uh, second semester of sophomore year, I was like, okay, Tamara, we tired of just sitting on our hands and our knees and just wanting to be do better but not actually putting in that extra work so i had to do a little mindset change like, okay tamara we're just gonna go out to practice every day do what we can do and leave it on the track there it is there so in my sophomore year uh, i started putting up some decent times like some some pretty good times and so my coach pulled me to the side I was like tamara i need you to come back your junior year with the same mindset with a grind i said okay cool junior year it was my time so i really I really pushed myself and like blocked everybody else out of my peripheral. So after a lot of hard work and dedication, I was able to run the SECs. Um, I was able to, uh, I qualified for regionals twice. Sidebar, uh, the first time I qualified for regionals, I did not compete because I took a study abroad trip mm. uh, before knowing that I was going to qualify. So that was kind of a iffy on my part, but I don't regret not taking that study abroad trip but back to the story um so then about to my junior year uh i was going through another time where i was um going through like, a lot of like mental health issues with self-confidence and thinking that i could do everything by myself and not letting people like kill me along the way um so the fall of my junior year was rough it, it was rough 
but the Lord brought me out on the other side. So 2019 is when I saw God really show up and show out. So like I said, um, I qualified for regionals. I went and I PR. I hadn't PR outdoor the entire season. Like, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Why well, I'm not putting up the numbers? What's going on? I PR with 11.45. I was like, wow, like I've never run that far that fast before. And I was like, I really did it. And like the cherry on top, um, I was like two people away from qualifying for nationals. It was mm-hmm. like 0. 0.02 of a difference between me and the two other girls. So like, though I wish I would have ran uh, in nationals individually, just to see myself and know that I was that close, that close. Like Tamir, you deserve to be here. You deserve to run these people. Like you are up to par with everybody out here. So um, also my junior year, I, I still stay quiet. I grinded or whatever. One of our girls on the four by one team was injured. And so they needed a replacement, an alternative, an alternate. So because I did such a great job at regionals, my coach decided to put me on the relay team. Mind you, my junior year, I had not ran any relays. So <laughs> at nationals it was my first time running the relay with it with these young ladies. And also, mind you, I was first leg. I've never ran first leg before. Wow. Wow. Block starts has it was kind of like my weak, my weakness. Like I was decent at blocks, but that was like my biggest area that needed improvement. So the idea that I was a walk-on athlete, it's my junior year. I am representing the University of Arkansas at the national meet, popping off the four by one relay. It's just a, a big story in itself. Um, and I will say Ed Nationals was like one of the first times I did not feel like any anxiety going to me. Like I was confident, I knew what I needed to do. And I was just blessed to be here and just to help my team do what they had to do. So the girls, you know, we did our thing. We won nationals, outdoor nationals. So that was just like, oh, my gosh, I was on the national winning team. <laughs> and then to also be able to stand on the podium, we got third place out of the world, like, out of the nation. Like being a part of the third fastest 4 by one women's collegiate team for 2019. Everybody can't say that. Everybody don't go to national and leave with a award. So that's a testament in itself. Uh, senior year, uh, my senior year uh, off season, you know, I'm like, okay, I end off my junior year. Great. Senior year, we finna pop it off. Like, this is my last year. I got to do some damage. So I ran into some uh, injury issues uh, around... September, October, I found out that I had uh, stress reactions in both of my uh, shins. So that put me out a few weeks. I struggled with that injury off the right indoor. Uh, by the grace of God, I was able to compete at the indoor SECs, but I didn't run as fast as I wanted to just because I was out for so long. So I'm okay. Indoor, it wasn't the best, but you know, we got outdoor. We're going we to tear it up outdoor. We like outdoor any, more, more anyways. So then COVID decided to come on in. Uh, we were supposed to go to Texas Relays, I think it's like the third week of March or something. And COVID had hit right before we were getting ready to go to Texas Relays. So COVID just snatched my senior year, out, just took it away. So that that really hurt, man. Like I had grinded so hard, so hard. Like I was so disciplined in how I was eating, weightlifting, training. Like I was even going to the sports psychologist to make sure my mental was right. Like I was trying to get everything right. And for COVID to come in and just yank it, it hurt. I will say uh, the summer 2020, I was I was in a bad headspace. Like I was questioning, like, why didn't I get this opportunity? Like, what's really up? So around April, uh, when they were like COVID was just fresh when the um, SEC and NCAA decided to give the student athletes who were supposed to compete uh, in tw- outdoor 2020 season to give them their season back. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's been said, the AD done said it, this is real. Mind you, I was graduating spring 20. So I'm like, okay, I'm finna go to a graduate school. I applied here for uh, University of Arkansas grad school and I was also applying for um, graduate assistant positions as well. 
Um, I applied for um, athletics for two positions. One position I applied for, um, I didn't make it uh, through the interview process. And the other one, I made the interview process, but I didn't get it. So um, after that meeting with the AD uh, telling us every that everybody's going to get that season back, I received a phone call from my now supervisor. And she was like, hey, Tamara, um, I was just wondering, do you plan on taking your um, your eligibility year? You out there? I was like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really considerate, knowing that you know it's a thing now. It's not just like a myth, or whatever. And then she was like, if you decide to take this GA job, you have to choose the GA job or finishing your last outdoor season. And that was because um, my particular position, I'm working with the athletes that that would be my teammates. So it's kind of like a conflict of interest of me being an employee and a student athlete, just being in that space. So I understand it from a professional standpoint. But to hear us say that I had to choose, I mean, obviously I knew what I was going to choose to the GA job because it's about to pay for my school. But the idea that COVID yanked my um, senior outdoor season away, and then I was kind of given it back by the NCAA SEC. And then just because I know I wasn't trying to run professionally, it was kind of yanked again. So... COVID, COVID and did some damage, but I will say, uh, during the summer of 2020, it gave me a lot of time to think on like who I am outside of athletics. Like now that I'm no longer an athlete, who will I choose to be? How will I choose to define myself? So that was a, it was hard, but it was a much needed time for me to focus on me and how I desire for people to see me and how I desire to see myself. So August, September, um, I decided that, you know, I wanted to pick arts back up and really get this thing rolling. I had to put it back down to the side. It was because I just wasn't mentally prepared for the vision that I had. I think I was really doubting myself once again on what I want arts to be, how I want people to perceive it, and all that good stuff. So I had to put it down in August, September. Over the few months, you know, I'm really over here working on mental. So at this point, I started going to therapy talking to my emotions, um, going through grad school, just trying to find out my identity outside athletics, outside of being a student athlete. And so around December, uh, one of my mentors, Crystal Beecham, she told me a lot along the way. I told her, I said, Crystal, it's time to get right. Arts is, arts is uh, launching January 24th. She said, all right. And so I grinded those few weeks and then here we are. Man. Yeah, Chris, Chris yeah, is definitely Chris good people. Is. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's definitely definitely good people. And she actually, I had her as a guest uh, on, on some of the early episodes on season one. Uh, I had her as a guest. So that's that's super dope to see, you know, to see the stars align and, and, and see paths cross. Yes. Mm. So, with, so with COVID affecting your athletic eligibility, if you will, or, or, or your completion of athletics, like, do do you feel that that you didn't have closure, or do you feel that that like talk talk about that? In the moment, I feel like I didn't have closure because it ended so abruptly. Like I wasn't prepared for it to end in March. I was, I was gonna be prepared for it to end around June, July. Yeah, I'm like okay, you know, nationals and hey, maybe USA. So I don't know. So I'm like, okay. It was it was a shocker just because it was a few months earlier and the idea that I did not run any outdoor. So senior year, there was no outdoor for me. There was none. So the idea that I was I had such big expectations of myself, my senior year outdoor, and then idea that it was just yanked, taken, not apologized for, just stolen. But I had to uh kind of change my mindset when I use the words like stolen and yanked, like they're very aggressive verbs um but now i see it as it was a turning point that god wanted me to do a little bit earlier than i expected that my my purpose was no longer be, need to be served as a student athlete i kind of wish i would have known that it's a tad bit early but you know what god don't tell you anything but now uh, i understand how and why everything feel the way it did yeah, definitely, definitely. So, so talking a little bit more about arts, why why is the platform so needed? Um, j just in regards to uh, serving and supporting student athletes, why why arts and why now? Why arts? Why now? Well, giving a little background, um, I feel like God put arts on my heart 
my freshman year of college, he just spoke athletes raising the standard. I'm like, okay, all right, what what like what is that? And so over the years running, he revealed to me like what arts is gonna be, what he, who who I want to target, and all of this stuff. So the reason why arts is needed is because I feel there's an informational gap between um, high school athletes and then college athletes. I will say over my years of running that the people that I started out with, I didn't finish with, let it be for academic reasons, social, emotional, financial. There's various reasons why people are not able to finish as a um, collegiate student athlete graduate. And I noticed that a lot of people, um, they did, everybody doesn't have the same resources to get to college and to also like stay and be motivated to be in college. So for example, but now I look back in high school, I had a lot of resources. So I was a part of this group called Arkansas Commitment, which was a, a cohort of African-American men and women within the Little Rock area that basically like scholars, the top of the top in their high school. And the program really um, exposed us to different types of institutions. So like the Ivy League institutions, so institutions where black people aren't really yet. I was exposed to um, like premium ACT prep, like all the things you need to get to college. And I noticed that a lot of students don't get that support. And mind you, it was free. It was just, I was, I applied and I got accepted. And it was only like 20 of us or 15 of us. And like each and every year, the number decreases because the standard to stay in the cohort is, um, it increased. So I think like your senior year, you had to keep a three, five uh, cumulative and do this, this and that. So it was pretty, it was some heavy hitters in the cohort. So, um, so Arkansas Commitment was an example. I was also part of AVID um, Advancement via Individual Determination. It's a college preparatory uh, program for um, for students. They have them in middle school and high school, and basically the class teaches you what you need to do to prepare for college. So how to apply for college, how to fill out a uh, FAFSA, um, how to write an email, how to write thank you, uh, how to work, where and how to volunteer. So all those check marks you have to check off during the uh, college application process. So those are two organizations that helped me tremendously just to get to college. And not only that, I was also supported by both my parents and my sister. All of my family have went to college. My mother uh, got her associate, my dad got his bachelor's and my sister had a master's. So I come from a family that we get to our education. So it's like, okay, I feel supported in this space. Not everybody has that family support that school support and that community support. So seeing that lack really motivated me to to do arts. But to but to specifically talk about athletes, during my uh, student athlete transition, I don't know I don't know who told me about this, but the instead of like eligibility clearinghouse, like that's the whole thing that students don't know about. Like the idea that you have to have a certain amount of classes to be certified to even be a collegiate athlete like your act scores who you send it to uh your transcript like are you taking these classes are you going to graduate in time what type of school are you trying to go to how are you communicating with the coach like that information like student athletes don't know and mind you yes the counselors in high schools they're given this duty to like help the athletes but like they got so much on their plate they not mm -hmm. really an expert in the athlete transfer portal to college they're they try to get folks scholarships and help folks you know that's going through like mentally emotionally all that good stuff so it's like there needs to be someone who has like an expert in that field to help students understand the um the seriousness and the intenseness of being a college athlete i feel like the media portrays student athletes in this glamour lifestyle like yes you know we got nice gear and we get good footage and we get fed good but the hard work that goes behind it, like all that is earned. The practices, the sacrifices, the eating sacrifices, like it's it's like a lifetime commitment. Why are you a student athlete? Like you committed to that and you committed to that. And so just showing up high school athletes that the realities of what being a student, student athlete is and what the expectations are gonna be will help students like mentally prepare themselves for, okay, this ain't nothing like high school, athletically or academically. I got to enter this with a, a brand new, open-minded mindset. Like, I don't know what's going to come, but I know it's like high school. That's what I do know. <laughs> so just filling that gap will be beautiful. That is why Athletes Raising the Standard is here today. 
Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there definitely is a gap um, because I mean, I see, I see it so often, and I mean, I, and I, honestly, I've even seen it talking with former student athletes, aka people who have graduated and used to compete. And there, I talked to a woman just the other day, and she was just saying, you know, I'm not sure what I need to do to begin to get certain things put in place to set me up for my career and for my next transition. So, I mean, there's gaps all across the board, but I'm glad you're filling that gap just in regards to. You know, working with these these uh, high school students and well, student athletes. So high school students up and coming into college and even those, you mm-hmm. know, getting to that position. So, I mean, I definitely commend you on on doing that work for sure. Yes. Much needed. Much needed. Who's no I might be a be a consultant just for athletes. And I'm just visiting different school districts and helping athletes, you know, figure out the whole transition and working with teams. I mean, you never know. You never know. It could be a position out there waiting for my name on it definitely or you can build your own position who knows you know what i'm saying no. yeah 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 so i'm so i'm i'm, I'm curious because you, you well I, i'm only asking because the people out there they they didn't they didn't see or they didn't hear the question when i asked you offline but i, but I see you have like some sticky notes behind you in your in your room or in your office area what what, what you got on them sticky notes back there miss kirkendall right. okay okay let's see let's see let's see um I got three. That's my favorite. So my my first favorite, it says, speak what you seek until you see what you said. So basically, you got to say that again. You got to say that again. Run it under the bridge. One more time for the good people. Speak what you seek until you see what you said. Okay, now you can break it down. Go ahead. You got it. All right. So from reading that quote this just reminds me that i need to speak things into existence so people like oh i'm manifesting this manifesting that i'm speaking my dreams into existence so they'll one day become my reality so that's like my 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 number one go-to my second one says say a prayer and let it go Mm. so uh, i know throughout this whole interview i brought up god a lot um, I take my spirituality very seriously. It has helped me become the person I am today. And so I will say over the past few months, I've grown closer to God just in my transition in life and I de- identify myself. The Lord has really been there the whole time. And so I had to learn that when I pray and say what is worrying me, what I'm struggling with, I'm supposed to leave it at God's feet and let it go. Like once I give it to him, I know I can do nothing else until he tells me, until he tells me to move. So Say a prayer, let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. And then my last one is which one I'm gonna use? I will choose me today. Mm. I feel like a lot of times we get into the idea that we gotta help others. Like helping others isn't bad, but we can get so consumed in helping others that we forget about ourselves. And like loving ourselves and caring for ourselves that we end up trying to pour from an empty cup. So if I choose myself daily, I'm able to be full and pour into others. So I need to put myself first just to make sure I'm good so that I'll be able to help others. So, yes. So I'm curious with, 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 with you saying that, how does... How does a student athlete go about doing that? Because they're, you know, they're they're either on the road, traveling to a game, coming from a game, in weights, watching film, uh, looking at scouting reports. Like, how does a student athlete find time to do that? Or what would you suggest that a student athlete does in regards to filling up their own cup? Um, I would say just to remember your why. So why are you doing this? Like. I feel like knowing where your why comes from really can refuel you when you're feeling low or you're feeling like very depleted. So like some people, let's say like God gives you this talent. And so you're doing this to honor God. You are worshiping him and praising him during that. So like when you're at these low moments where it's like, you know, why am I here? Why I'm up this early? Why do I have to not eat this? Like why, why, why? You just remember that your why needs to be bigger than what you're doing. Otherwise, you're not going to do what you're doing for a long time. Um, yeah, like, I feel like also, too, like sometimes athletes get caught up in the hype 
of like being the number one, getting all this exposure, like the fans love it, blah, 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 blah. And then let's say you had a bad pass or something and now they boo on you. So like you feeling down and out. It's like, dang, like I was doing it for the fans. And like now y'all just, just booing a person. Like what's what's really good? And so like you kind of lose that. Like, dang, why am I really here? Like you kind of lose a part of yourself too because your why is really connected to yourself as well. So it's like finding that grounded why. That why where it doesn't matter what happened, I'm still going to do this because I'm doing it for X, Y, and Z. That's what's going to keep you strong throughout the entire way because being a student athlete ain't easy. You're going to be tried. You're going to be pressed. <laughs> you, you're going to be questioned, tested, criticized. This is not a job for the week. But, yeah, it's going to, yeah. So where do you see arts going in the, in the next like five years? What 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 does that look like? Because you you know you created this platform, you launched the platform to really help these student athletes successfully just around you know being able to navigate uh, just the, the the college athlete experience. So five years from now, where where do you where do you see or what do you see happening with arts? I see arts becoming an LLC. I see um, arts like me as a founder. Um, hosting workshops for high schools and also colleges for the incoming students is teaching them about different like content material that I'll cover. So for example, in arts, I'll focus on like the academic preparation. So that involves like um, organization, time management, all those skills you need in order to be um, academically su successful. I'm also going over like the basic NCAA eligibility uh, requirements, such as like the NCAA clearinghouse, like uh, classes, GPA, communication with coaches, like your basic things. And then also um, really honing in on the social expectation of being a student athlete. So like eliminating what the media puts out as what a student athlete is, but hearing it from somebody who was a student athlete and also hearing other student athlete stories. And then last but not least, last but not least, I want to eliminate the black athlete narrative. I'm pretty sure we all know this idea that when you think of black student athletes or athlete, well, I'm gonna say black student athletes, you think, oh, they're lazy. They just here because they play football. They just here just to be a part of the team. They don't care about education. I don't know how they got here. Like just disqualifying, disqualifying us academically like we're not intelligent enough to even be here. It's like you questioning my intelligence, but I'm doing both. I have the intelligence and the physical skill. So it's like, Eliminate the idea that we are one-minded individuals, that we are we are only created to be for our physical bodies and mm -hmm. that our mind is not, I guess, useful. And so really showcasing um, athletes outside of their sport. So they hobbies, they businesses, they dreams, they aspirations, because one day all athletes are going to have to hang up their shoes, put their basketball to the side, take their jersey off. One day it's going to end, even professionally. Like, hopefully, you know, if you have a dream to play professionally, cool. Okay, you got an extra five, maybe ten years. But eventually, you could be 40. You can't move like you did when you was 20. Now, the real question is, when you was in college, did you get the education you needed? Did you use all the resources you needed? Because now you're a grown person. you in the real world. And you're not going to ask So they're like, who are you? You... You did what? And so it's like, at that point, what are you going to do? So that's the only thing I want to push athletes like to, to have a backup plan. Not saying that having a backup plan means you're not going to go pro or anything like that. It's just that anything can happen. You can get injured tomorrow and your career could be over with. What you going to do then? If you, like I said, eventually you're going to have to hang up your shoes anyway. So it's like being proactive in your planning. That's good. That's good. I think that's so I think that's super necessary. And I really I really appreciate you coming on today, Tamara, and sharing your story, because I, I, I think more people need to need to hear the story and more people need to know that it's a grind and more people need to know that even in addition to being a grind, that just because they're student athletes doesn't only make them a athlete, especially, you know, if we're talking the black athlete, that it that that, you know, just because they can run fast, jump high do backflips or whatever else that doesn't mean you know that they can't be multifaceted or anything like that so 
Yeah, I de definitely appreciate you you coming on. Definitely appreciate you sharing your story. I, I want you now to let let people know where they can where they can find you. And yes, follow. yes, yes. So, like I said before, athletes raise the standard. Launched on January twenty fourth. We are already a weekend. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Twitter and Twitter at Arts Athletes A R T S athletes and then we also have a website athletes raising the standard.com so i would love if you guys just check into my social media and the website content is coming very soon and i'm excited for what arts has to bring excellent excellent and just before i let you get out of here everybody i run them through it always we got to do the two minute drill uh -oh. and, and and the two minute drill for those of you who might not know what it is i just ask our guests a few questions a handful uh, rapid fire questions just for some fun just so that people can see just a different side of you and get inside of your head but Ooh. it's just just for just for fun nothing nothing too deep but okay. are you ready tamira let's get it okay here we go favorite food watermelon okay uh what's the last book you read Um, can it be a school textbook? Yeah. Oh. Ooh, I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question. I'm trying to get my reading back up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, what, what's your Netflix go-to show of preference or streaming show of preference? Netflix. Okay. Okay. What, what show on Netflix? I'm currently watching the Parkers, so I'm really going back watching the old like '90 <laughs> Black families, so like the Parkers, Moesha, uh, mm -hmm. One Hundred and One, all the ghosts. Yeah, they all on there. Yeah, they got it. They got them all on there. What, what's your What's your favorite podcast to listen to? Uh, it's a podcast called She Me Her Podcast. It's a group of three um, young women, young Black women. Uh, they're probably in their mid twenties, and they basically talk about uh, various issues that african-american 20-somethings go through and just really just being very authentic in their experience and their relationship so i love them nice nice and then uh last question what's one tip that you like to give to a student athlete one tip take your time If I will say, I will say it's not always what you know, it's who you know. So to give a little background with that, um, that's how I got my graduate assistant position. So my the beginning of my senior year, I knew that I, I want to go to grad school and that, you know, if I do go to Arkansas, that I need a, I need a J position because somebody got paid for this. So I was, you know, letting a lot of my um, athletic mentors know that I'm interested, like who I need to talk to, like where I need to go. So they sent me to like my my current supervisor. She was like over the GA, GA jobs, whatever. And we were having a big opening, like a whole bunch of people were like, they're, they're, we feel like five positions up this past, these two semesters. So then I started building a relationship with her. Mind you, we hadn't really had any contact until then. Um, so... My senior year, I started talking with her more, letting her know I'm interested, just checking in on office, like, hey, how you doing? You know, just letting her know I'm, I'm still here. Um, then she told me about the application open up. She helped me through that. Like, she's very helpful. So, mind you, I said one of the J jobs that I applied for, um, so I applied for two. One of them, I didn't make it through the, I didn't make it through the interview, interview process. And the second one, I did make it through the interview process, but I didn't make it. So, one day, she calls me. was like, hey, Tamara, how you doing? So I'm doing good. How you doing? So I'm doing great. I was wondering, would you like the uh, graduate assistant job? <laughs> I, I said, yeah. I, was, I said, yeah, of course. Like, what, what would you need to do? Like, uh, do I need to interview? Do I need to, like, what would you do? Um, really, Samara, so you can just come in, sign your paperwork. I know you're pretty qualified. I know, like, all the work you can do. So we're going to get this thing started. So, like, her seeing who I was as a student, as an athlete, her just seeing my work ethic just spoke volumes to her to know that I trust Tamara enough to give her this position that, you know, 
if, if people know you, if, if people know you do good things, they gonna vouch for you. And if they need the help, they say, hey, I'm gonna hire my team. Let, let's go. Let's get mm. it. So boom there it is there it is and bonus question who who is one person you like to see me interview on beyond the ball next um ooh. i gotta pull up their name i'm gonna get their name correct <laughs> oh i know sydney hammett sydney hammett okay. Yes. okay oh i know who you're talking about i know who you, she she also ran track i believe yes and you think my story is phenomenal? Sydney, Sydney's story is a testimony. Like hearing all her trials wow. and all her success, it, it's beautiful. Like I will say Sydney is one of one out of a few people who really motivated me to to stay consistent with this track thing. Cause it was many times I was like, Sydney, I don't know if I can do this. But like she really motivated me and encouraged me and pushed me. Like spiritually, that's like that's my spiritual sister. Like oh wow. She uplifts me. I uplift her. You go to Sydney when you're feeling down. When you when it's hard, when it's a workout is kicking your butt, Sydney gonna help you pick you back up. But oh, Sydney man. Hammett, you wanna hear a phenomenal testimony? Sydney Hammett. Okay, cool, cool, cool. One, one, one more time, let, let, let the people know where they can follow you and how they can get connected with you and just be up to date with everything that you have going on with arts. Yes. So like I said before, you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at arts athletes, A-R-T-S athletes. And also we have a website, www.athletesraisingthestandard.com. You can find more information about me, my journey, and also uh, the blog articles that I'll be posting consistently and also the fun content I'll be putting out on social media. So please come, please like, please share, enjoy. Let's build a community. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Dope, dope, dope. Thank you so much for, for coming on today. Tamara, we appreciate you being here and, and, and sharing your story and also just sharing the work that you're doing uh, to help student athletes get to the next level. I think that's really dope. I love definitely it. Thank that's you. Dope. Most definitely. To all the ballers out there, all the ballers out there, uh, if you all found this interview very impactful i want you to take time and i want you to be sure to connect with tamara shoot her a dm let her know uh what part of her story really inspired you or let her know like one gym or two gyms or three gyms that you took away from just what she shared and then also we just encourage you uh to follow her and just so you can stay up to date with her journey and stay up to date uh with with what she's doing with arts just as she said you can follow on social media with the handle at arts athletes at arts, A-R-T-S, athletes. And then also I want to encourage you, if you have not subscribed yet to the podcast, I would encourage you to subscribe on Apple Podcasts and then leave a, a rate and review if your spirit leads you to do so, because that way you can help us continue to create just a platform for stories, strategies, and successes to ultimately help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball.